I brought my hymnal with me today. Now, this hymnal has a retirement plan attached to it. It was given to me in 1996 when I was ordained as an elder in the United Methodist Church by my aunt and uncle by marriage, Lucille and Tom Neighbors in, of Nashville. Uh, it, it has, I offered a retirement package because I wasn't too good to it. Can, can you read that? Can y'all read that on the front? It used to say John Fleming on it. But it doesn't really say that anymore. And I wasn't good to it. Are there any librarians or people who love books in the congregation today? I wasn't good to it. I did this. You're not supposed to do that. But I did that. So I broke its spine. And it was on the injured reserve list. And I offered a retirement package. And But I, I tell you. I can't give this hymn the love. I got a newer one back there in my office, and I usually bring it in, in here, but this, see how bad it is? <laughs> I I can't give this up because it has too many memories inside of it for me. Inside this, this hymn, though, written on certain, I told Danny earlier today, this is a good lesson for me and for anyone who does music, I would write down the number the, uh, on a hymn, the date in which we sang it. Otherwise, I would keep singing my favorite songs over and over and, and over again. I use this hymnal on December the 3rd when I perform this wedding ceremony for my, my oldest daughter, right? And I'll tell you, that's on page 864 in your hymnals. You can open that up and, and look, and you can see on page 864 in this hymnal. Uh, Daniel, can you see how I've got little post-it notes there? I did that on the wedding after, after I forgot the name of the bride. <laughs> Oops. I mean, I knew I'd called her a thousand times, but I didn't have her name written, and so now... Whenever I do a wedding, I make sure her name and his name is right there in my hymnal. If you flip over a few more pages, you get to the ritual for our, our death and resurrection. I used this hymnal yesterday for to remember Joy Reed. Some of you may remember Joy Reed. Where we say things like this, dying, Christ destroyed our death, rising, Christ restores our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Joy Reed put on Christ, so in Christ will she be now clothed in glory. If you flip back to page 39 or 42, I forget, it's where the baptism ritual is. We, did, we used it this morning for a sweet little girl named Hadley. We baptized her. I had this hymnal with me when I baptized a little boy named Blake Johnson. Blake was in the first church that I ever served. His, his mother was Baptist, and his daddy was, was United Methodist, and the daddy's influence was greater than the mom, so they started coming to the United Methodist Church. And he says, we need to baptize Blake. We really need to baptize Blake. Blake was a squirmer, I can tell you, that when we dedicated a building, we'd, we'd added on to that building when I, in that first church I served. Bishop Wilkie came. And uh, Blake loved to talk and to squirm, and so Bishop Wilkie did me a favor. He came and sat, I'll never forget it, he came and sat down on the floor with this little four-year-old boy and said, hey, listen to the preacher today. <laughs> so he was a little bit of a squirmer. But he was on his best behavior on his baptism day, right? And so he came uh, up uh, for his baptism. His mom and his dad were right there beside me. I had this hymnal. As I said, I was open to page 42, and we were doing the baptism. And I reached into the waters, and Blake had been as good as, as, good as, as long as he could. He squirmed, and he hit, he hit the water that was in my hand in the baptismal bowl, and that water went up in the air. Just imagine it, kind of slow motion, the water just flowing through the air, and it landed on my hymnal, and it landed on his mama, and I hope a little bit landed on him. And we baptized Blake in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Whenever I pull out this hymnal, 
and go to that page, I can see where the, wa- where the page is a little ruffled where the water landed, right? I, uh, I didn't have it with me the day I went to Children's Hospital. I was associate pastor at First United Methodist in Little Rock. And there was a family <coughs> uh, uh, whose uh, who's mem- family member, well, let me, let me put it this way. A little boy named Noah Harris. He was two days old. His daddy had been United Methodist, but he married a good Catholic girl, and so they were Catholic now. He had converted. Every other family member was United Methodist. I went to the hospital because Noah had been born with two chambers of his heart and not four. And he was pretty sick. He was in the NICU. And so we went back. Uh, I went there just to be with the family. And he needed to have this very important procedure. And his mom said, I want him to be baptized before this procedure in case he doesn't make it. And they called the priest. And the priest didn't answer the phone. He couldn't find him. And so she said, John... Will you baptize Noah? And I said, absolutely. So for memory, I went back to the NICU, had a little plastic cover over Noah because uh, he was that sick, and I had a little saline. You nurses know what I'm talking about, a little salt water. And I reached in, and I baptized Noah in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Right? It's a powerful moment. About five minutes later, the priest showed up. He baptized Noah too. And Bobby said, hey, just like me, Methodist first, then Catholic. <laughs> That's been a lot of years ago. I mean, a lot of years ago, more than, more than 20, 25 years ago, those two baptisms. But when I pull out this hymnal, I remember them. They are forever etched in the pages and in my mind and in my heart. Today, I want us to think about two baptisms, okay? I want us to think about the baptism of Jesus, and I want us to think about our own baptisms. Will you, will you go there with me today? The, this story, which Jen read for us when we eventually got her Bible back up here, <laughs> this story is important. Rarely, rarely do Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all record the same story in their Gospels at the same time. But they do that with this story. So it's, it's significant. Let me tell you, it's significant. It's important, right? I mean, they don't even all record the story of the birth of Jesus. You know that, don't you? You've had preachers tell you that, right? I mean, Matthew and Luke are the ones who give you the Christmas place. They get wise men and shepherds and angels and all that. Mark hardly mentions it. John's version begins in the heavens. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the fact that this story is here in all four Gospels means it's very, very significant, very important. Right? Are you with me? Are you with me? I like to say that as I've told you. Matthew tells his story in this particular way. Now, we'll look at Mark, we'll look at at Luke, and we'll look at John eventually in the next three years. We'll do it every year because this this is something we do every year. But picture it with me. Go to to the chilly waters of the Jordan River and see that John the Baptist is out there preaching as loud as he can. His words are echoing off the wilderness walls, right? And there are folks who have never heard that kind of preaching who went out to listen to him, who repented of their sins and were baptized by him. That's the the image. That's what I want you to picture. That's where I want you to go, right? And there standing in line with everybody else is Jesus, And I want to go up to Jesus and say, Jesus, what are you doing here? You don't belong with all these sinners, right? You are the one without sin. You don't belong here. You don't have to be here. And Jesus would whisper back to me, John, it is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. 
There are four things I want you to see in this scripture lesson right off the bat. Here's the first. John protests the baptism of Jesus. He says, I don't need to baptize you. You need to baptize me. They were cousins, right? You remember that? And John knew exactly who Jesus was at that moment in time, I believe. The second thing I want you to see is that, is that Jesus says this is all part of God's plan. It's fitting to do this to fulfill all righteousness. It's God's plan. Here's the third thing. You remember after he was baptized, the heavens were opened up and a dove descended and, and lit on Jesus and landed on him, the Holy Spirit? I submit to you today that not only was Jesus baptized that day, he was ordained that day. It's his ordination. It's the beginning of his ministry. By the way, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus' ministry begins with baptism and it ends with baptism. At the very end of the gospel, Jesus says, Go baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And lo, remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So those are three things I want you to say. Here's the fourth. The heavens are opened up. And God says to Jesus, This is my son. This is my son. My beloved, as if everyone out there could hear it. This is my son, my beloved. With him I'm well pleased. My dad went to heaven in 2018, so he's been gone about five years now. About this time of year, actually, in March. I always love that when my dad says, John, I'm proud of you. Right? I mean, we, we like that. I'd love that for my father, even more so for my God. Right? You are my son, with whom I'm well pleased. And so, that's all there is. Jesus is baptized. He comes up out of the water. The dove lands on him. The Holy Spirit is given to him. The voice of heaven comes down from him, and that's it. He's still wet with those baptismal waters when the Holy Spirit whisked him out to the wilderness where he is tempted uh, three times in 40 days, you remember, or at the end of 40 days. We'll get to that story a little bit later this year. But that's all there is. There's no explanation. There's no telling us why Jesus was there to be baptized or how Jesus was there to be baptized. We know he was immersed, but we don't know anything else about it. But this is what I do know. This is what I do know, friends. These baptismal waters are important, right? They change us. They're significant. Amen? I hope you know we're in a sermon series. <laughs> I've kind of already mentioned that this morning. Last week, we thought about how God's will for us is to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all circumstances. And I said, if we would do all that together, y'all are doing that, right? Daniel, are you doing that? Are you joining me in that daily prayer? Jen, you're doing that, right? Danny, choir, y'all need to lead by example back there, okay? So we're resetting our church life in that way. Now I'm giving you a chance to reset your spiritual life, your walk with Christ, by remembering your baptism. We've thought about Jesus' baptism. I want us to think about our own for just a moment. We hear that voice, This is my son. You are my daughter, with whom I'm well pleased. Listen. Listen to this. Sometimes we forget that we're God's children. And when we forget that we're God's children, the world will tell us who we are. The world will scream out to us and says, you're not important, you're insignificant. Or the world will say something like this, uh, if, uh, if you dress this way, if you believe this way, if you drive this car, if you live in this house, if you follow this thing, or if you do that thing, if you do this, if you... If you will do, if you will say, if you will believe, then you're worthy. Otherwise, you're not. 
That's what the world says. My mother, who's 91, watches the live stream. Mother, forgive my English here, but the world don't know us. The world don't know us. There's only one person that knows us. And that's God. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows your thoughts before you have them. He knows everything about you and loves you anyway. He knows you. He loves you. You are his son. And you are his daughter. And with you, he is well pleased. Amen. We have thought about the baptism of Jesus. And we have thought about our own baptisms. We had the chance to baptize a sweet little girl this morning. What I want to do with you today is to invite you to come forward in just a moment. There are four stations. You can see it. Four bowls. In those bowls are little blue stones. I would like to invite you to come forward and to put your hands into the, these cold waters and to receive one of these stones, okay? As a reminder of two things. One is the baptism of Jesus, and the other is if you've been baptized, to remember your baptism. If you have not been baptized, still, please, come forward and receive one of these stones and remember that God loves you very, very much. And if you're not baptized and you want to be baptized sometime, if you, Jen and I and Danny would love to visit with you about that possibility. For now, I want to invite you to come.